I wanted to take small steps on trying to make improvements every year to establish ourselves as a team that is a solid, performing and functioning and looking team. Obviously, the objective is to attract higher level riders so that you can perform at a higher level. So before you can do any of that, you have to create that base, you know? And so we've, I think we've increased our base every year and now we're a, a pretty high level team. And obviously with the support of Honda and their technology, we, we continue to improve. When Justin came on board, it was his affiliation and relationship with Honda that really kind of brought us all together. And, and Honda, of course, uh, is a very big proponent of Justin. They like him, they get along well. So when he brought us into that relationship with Factory Honda, uh, it really just blossomed for him, us, them, and the whole program. So having him be part of our team as a writer is certainly a feather in our cap. But even him as an individual, we just really enjoy him and uh, as a guy, as a father, as a friend, as a, an employee. I've said before, Tony Alessi is a racer's team manager. If I need anything, it's on my doorstep the next morning. If, we, if I want to try a piece or a part on the bike and we don't have it, we need to make it, it's being made the next morning. Like maybe at 4 a.m. He's, he's trying to get it done. Genova is, he just, he, he, he leads so well. I think that's missing in, in a few teams. and. His leadership, at, you know, I've always said with every team it starts at the top, and I believe he uh, he does it right and, and does it well. I'm excited to um, to really be a part of it and help them really get the kind of the truth out about them as people. I'm not sure that we really have as much of a checkered past uh, on on paper as maybe others do, but it doesn't matter because perception is oftentimes the reality. We, we've worked real hard to not have anything so that, that other than positive, and it's tough, it's tough. You're dealing with their emotions and tenacity and athletes and how do people get paid, so it's tough. And we're not the only ones that it's tough on. It's tough on all of them to walk a perfect line. And again, aligning ourselves with a Brayton and a Honda, it, it kind of connects the dots of that if we were really that much a crazy schmucks that people in companies like Honda wouldn't have us be part of their program. Vince has been uh, with the team longer than anybody. He's the oldest standing member of Smart Top Moto Concepts Honda. Um, Vince's biggest strong point for us is his ability to test parts. He's better than anybody. He can pick out any little change that we make and give us the right information, whether that's a better change or a worse change. In terms of racing, he is by no means a soft guy. The race shop is located in Southern California. We operate out of my boy's childhood or youth shop that they used to you know, run their mini bike program out of. And so I've moved the race shop here. Um, it's in close proximity, obviously, to where we live. And uh, it works great, you know what I'm saying? Like my mechanics are around the shop all the time. So uh, everybody knows everything that's going on with practice bikes and race bikes and parts that need to be ordered and material that we need. Everybody has their finger on the pulse. So there's, there's not a lot that gets by, you know, when you're that tight. Like I said, I mean, for me, I think it's a great working environment for myself and for the crew. Coming into Daytona, we knew that Daytona was gonna be a track that we thought that Justin would struggle at. It's an outdoor track. Yeah. He's not an outdoor guy. From the very first practice, I came off the track and I told my mechanic, Tony Berluti, I'm like, this track is so fun. I'm having so much fun out there. And that's the first time in however many years I've raced dirt bikes that I've came off the track and said that at Daytona. I thought he would be several positions further back than he was in qualifying and he was way further up. And I thought, oh, well, this is pretty good. This is unexpected. And we went and talked to him, how's the bike? Bike's good. How are you feeling? I actually feel pretty good. I'm like, okay. I needed to win or at least get second in my heat to get a good gate pick for the main event. And I did that, I just executed the day like I've never done, really. Went out to the first heat race, he wins. We're like, what? Like, he's fast here. Started second in the main event, I passed into the lead right away, and the rest is kind of history. I think at lap eight, I'm on the radio to his mechanic, and I'm like, I think we can win this race. Let's do this. We can win this thing. Crossing the checkered flag there was just, it was so many different emotions. 
um, just finally I, I, I've got to win and then to break the record for oldest to ever win a race and just so many great great thoughts that night and first win for the team uh, first win for my mechanic Tony Berluti who's been at it a long time and had so many factory riders throughout his his years of of wrenching and I couldn't be more proud of, of doing it now and, and the team I'm on and um, being a dad you know and if I was 25 and I would have done that I felt like it would have just added extra pressure that the following weekend or the following year and it'd be hard to live up to that it were now I don't have to live up to it I can just enjoy it he is 34 years old he's the oldest guy in racing and to accomplish the win at the hardest and most prestigious Supercross race of the season is amazing.